He is a theater icon who needs no introduction, so why should I try to write one? But what I do want to say is that February 15th, he's back on Broadway. He's going to slip back on the heels and the girdle, maybe. And he's going to... <laughs> no, no maybe about it. The <laughs> Taking over girdle. the role of Alban <laughs> in La Cage à Fall. Please welcome Harvey Firestein. Hello, Paulie. Oh, well, I'm so thrilled to have you. Lechayim, lechayim. The life. <laughs> so you are uh, deep in rehearsals, correct? I would, yes, deep is the, I think, the, 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 the technical term for that, yes. And you, uh, you've, you've been very busy, actually. You, yeah. This is not the only thing going on. You also, did, you've been working on Kinky Boots. Yeah. Well, the, yeah, this was totally unplanned as far as I was concerned. I was, um, I, 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 I was doing that other unplanned thing. Um, I took over uh, Fiddler on the Roof and did right. that for eight months on the road and then came home and I said, okay, now everybody leave me alone because I have two shows that I'm writing. Newsies with Alan Menken right. um, and, and Jack Feldman and Kinky Boots with Cindy Lauper. And uh, I said, I, I, I've got to do these things. I've got to, you know, so everybody leave me alone. And so, of course, they called me up and said, you got to go into Lakage. What do you mean? I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, you got to go into Lakage. Nobody will file. Doug Hodge is so brilliant in that right. role that um, everyone was sort of intimidated about taking over um, after him. They said, there are actors that will do it, you know, like if they're not the second. If they don't have to be compared to Doug, they'll do it. Right. So I figured, well, put me in there because after me, everybody will look good. So... I figured put me in there. <laughs> they sound lovely. They look lovely. Now, in some ways, this is so obvious. I mean, you wrote Lacage. You, you're known for drag. It, is this something that you had planned on doing eventually? Uh, no. No. It's, Why you know, is that? I, well, I wrote the show when I was about 27 years old. Right. So it was always way too, way too um, old a role for me. Right. And, and you don't think that a show's going to be around 30 years later. You know, you don't think... Uh, something I'm writing now is going to be, I mean, you can't think that way. Well, certainly when you're 27, you don't, you don't think you're going to live till 30, you know. So anyway, um, so I just never thought about it. And now, the big thing for me is to sit there and say, okay, usually like you go in and there's a role and then you, you, you break down the role and how I'm going to play it and whatever, you know, and even if it's a role classic role like Fiddler on the Roof. Mm -hmm. You say, this is how it's been done, but I have my own way of doing. But when you wrote it also, so I sit there and I go, what did I mean when I wrote that? And then I remember and I say, and you know, what did I not like about how it's always been done? And so, and so it's very confusing, but it's going to be different. It's going to be a little different than any other album, hopefully, and hopefully interesting. I, 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 I cannot promise better, but I can promise it will be an interesting, different take on Alban. For instance, Alban has always, when he's in men's clothes, he always has appeared in a suit, mm -hmm. like the, the promenade scene or the walk right. of, song, song of the Sand scene and all that. He's wearing a suit, a little fruity suit, but a suit. And I never understood that. I said, if he would wear suits, then what's the big deal about putting on a suit when he's Uncle Albert? Right. And... Um, and so I said, we're getting rid of the men's clothes. So I'm now wearing a sort of, um, I'm out in drag, but I'm in like the first outfit, sort of something B. Arthur would have worn on the Golden Girls. Wow. <laughs> it's a little Goldie girly. And the second one, I actually changed the line. There's a line where he says, you know, and my, where uh, Jacob the maid says, and my mistress ill-dressed. And, and he says, I thought you liked this suit. He said, look better on the hanger. That's the line, that's the actual line from the show, but I just changed it to, um, and my, and my mistress ill-dressed. I thought you liked this outfit. It was better on Liza. It's a, it's a sort of Halstony <laughs> Liza kind of outfit. And so you're able to, you have this great advantage. You can write lines. I can write lines. Um, you, wrote, you wrote a lot of lines in Hairspray, too, didn't threat. you? We don't uh, talk about that much. I ghost wrote Hairspray. But yeah. I wrote a lot. Well, I didn't just write lines. I structured Hairspray and all that kind of stuff. We don't talk about that. You're, you're, a, good, you're a good asset to have on, on a show. <laughs> or if you're the writer, I'm a pain in the ass. <laughs> but, but I've seen some awful productions of Lakage, and it still touches you, and it still uh -huh. works. So. so people have invited you to terrible productions? All the time. <laughs> I'll tell you, I went, oh God, it's many years ago, and it was a Mother's Day or something like that, and my nephews were really little, so there was a dinner theater, we will leave it nameless, that was doing Lacage, and we thought it might be fun to take the kids, take my mother, take my brother's wife, and have this right. Mother's Day at a dinner theater, and we'd go, <laughs> and you know, and they were like so excited that I was coming, and um, and was sitting like at the best table in the whole place, and 
the curtain goes up, da 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 and out comes the guy playing Georges, and he says, bonsoir, bonsoir. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I have been in the business for 40 years. This has never happened to me before. Let me start again. Bonsoir. I mean, the you didn't yell out his line poor. for him? No, I couldn't. <laughs> I just, I mean, my heart just went out to him so, and I just left. Did that ever happen to you? Every like day, up. are you kidding? <laughs> I call it the white room. It's a walk into, I walk into the white room. It's like, there's nothing, I don't know where I am. There's nothing on the walls. There's no, no one else here to give me a clue. I call it the white room. Have you? Uh, I do it all the time. Are you kissing Jeffrey Tambor yet in rehearsals? Nah, I'm just blowing him. <laughs> Come on, you give me an opening like that, you know where I'm going. Um, no, we have not. We have not yet. We, we, I, yes, yes. Actually, we do. We kiss a lot, but we haven't done the big. The, the chemistry is important, and yeah. you've said in the past that one of the most important things is that you believe this relationship from yeah. the first. And minute. I think you. And I think you will. I mean, he's just he's adorable, and we get along great. And and there is a certain chemistry that you can't make up. You know, which people watching us rehearse just go like, yeah, you got it. Don't worry about it. Don't even think about it. People are, are bringing up Lacage as part of the discussion of gay marriage. Obviously, yes. are, is the, do you want to get married? Are you looking for a husband? No. Um, you know, I went through that in my life, and and um, and I think it's about. I think America's about choices, and I think it always was for me when I was accused when I wrote Tort Song, and and I and I was vilified by the gay community you know for he's just trying to make us like like heterosexuals right. i don't want to ever get married i don't want children. who the hell wants children i don't want children. i don't know any gay people that want children right. i mean not look around but um my my feeling was in this and same thing to do with the military is it's not about what i want for myself what i want for myself is my own business it's about the fact that I live in America and America's supposed to be about freedom and America's supposed to be about choices. And if you have the right to do that, then I have the right because we're both citizens. Right. And the American dream never used to be about the government owes me. They owe me a live. They owe me an It used to be about you have the possibility if you're willing to work for it. That's what the American dream used to be. We lost the American dream. Mm -hmm. The American dream now is give me, give me, give me. And the, and the idea of the, of the American dream of being anything's possible has gotten lost in that. But to me, that's what gay marriage is about. Not necessarily who wants to get married. Right. Um, just the choice. I mean, I look at the heterosexuals around me and the mess that they make out of their lives and I say, they shouldn't allow heterosexuals to marry, period. I mean, they're much more messed up relationships than my gay friends. So, you know, that's got nothing to do with it. Right. So you won't be pushing a stroller with a husband in the next couple of years? Well, I did, you know, I wanted kids when I was a kid. And then writing Tort Song um, and having those kids made yeah. me really not want a child. You know, I raised, I mean, look at that list of boys I raised. Matthew Broderick, Fisher Stevens, John Cryer, right. Patrick Dempsey, um, 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 Chris Garten. Um, I mean, they've all gone on. You did good. Yeah, really, good I did. I was a good mama, but it was exhausting. <laughs> Mama's tits are killing her. <laughs> Feeding all them chilling. You said after the Torch Song movie that you were sort of retired from drag, which obviously didn't stick. Yeah. Um, so what is the the worst part about doing drag, now that you're going back into this? It's a lot of fucking work. And it's and then it depends on the character, you know. Um, it's all that shaving, you right. can see. Do you like being my smooth arms, as a baby? My arms shaved. Well, that's just it. You're only smooth as a baby that day. You know, the next day you're stubble. So it's like so this, you it's stubble not, a lot. Have you tried waxing or any of the Yeah, it's a or? pain in the butt. I ended up with, I've ended up with staph infections from waxing and, oh, it's a pain. Shaving is just easy. Um, I don't have to take off my eyebrows for this show because I'm not playing a woman. You know, right. Ed and I was playing a woman right. and it was really important that you believe everything about it. Um, Alban's a drag queen, so it's so it's a little different. You did a lot of drag very early in your career mm -hmm. when you were a teenager. You started doing drag. Did you ever go out and do drag on the streets, or did you just kept? Are you just a drag yeah. performer on stage? You gotta pay me. 
<laughs> you got to pay me to put that crap on. So you only, you're only in drag on the streets when you're going like to the Today Show or something. Uh -huh. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I mean, listen, I went to parties and stuff like that, you know, because I was with, when I was a kid, I was with Warhol. So, you know, when right. you're with that Warhol crowd, you dress like that and all that. But I would take all that stuff off on the subway going home to my mother. Because <laughs> I still lived with my parents through all that crap. And did they always know that you were doing these kind of shows? Yeah. Well, what we used to do was my brother would come see the show, and then he would uh, he would proclaim, they can see this show, they can't see that show. Okay. And it was funny. Everybody else's shows they could see, but whenever I wrote a show, he always said, no, they can't see that one. <laughs> <laughs> did they see uh, the show I wanted to talk to you about, Freaky Pussy? I, well, I didn't know he was going to Freaky Pussy. Um, no, I don't think they ever did see Freaky Pussy. D Freaky Pussy sounds like a show that I want back on, on the board. Is well, it Freaky, Freaky Pussy made a lot of it? sense. Freaky Pussy, actually, you know, when you when you talk about it, it makes it last. It took place in a subway bathroom. Right. Which don't Broadway really Lafayette exist. Station. Broadway Lafayette Station, which don't really, uh, 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 they don't exist anymore, do they? Subway bathrooms. It, oh, no, the bathrooms don't exist, absolutely yeah. not. Yeah, so, so it was a subway bathroom, and it was at the time when Bette Midler had become a right. big hit at the Continental Baths, and it was sort of my takeoff on that. So there were these drag queens that worked, these drag queen prostitutes that worked in the subway bathroom, and they turned tricks in the stall. Uh -huh. But this couple from Queens bought the rights from the city to make it into a restaurant. They were opening this underground restaurant, uh -huh. you know, this, this, this cool restaurant. And these drag queens had no place to go, and they were being thrown out. And so um, in an act of, of, um, of ultimate political um, uh, um, sacrifice, they committed suicide one by one. And you were not leave. And you were Blanche. accused of the murders. I did my yeah. research. Yeah, I was accused of the murders. And you but had an Orbit Desmond song, moment. The opening, the opening line... The opening line of the show, the, the entrance to the subway bathroom was an eight-foot vagina. <laughs> and to the strains of the Dance of the Seven Veils, I came through this rubberized vagina, like being given birth, you know? And it came through and was this loud, like, <laughs> when I finally popped out. And, um, and then the opening line was, that, I repeat, that is my complete and final statement to the press, get out. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Should we do a revival? I think so. <laughs> I think so. I don't think I can play the role anymore. I don't think I don't think I can get through that vagina anymore. Okay, I want to do something fun. We're gonna uh, we did this with Sutton Foster a few weeks ago. It was a lot of fun. We're gonna look at some photos from your past. And you're gonna talk about a few things. Uh, that's my high school class. And I was, and we were senior celebrities. You know, we voted something. I was actually voted two things. I was class clown and class prophet because I used to read tarot cards. But the girl with the long hair down in the corner over here, that's uh, Philomena and I have been friends since kindergarten. And we're still friends. Um, she does Coney Island artwork and all that. Um, Jimmy, behind her, is a bartender um, on 8th Street. He's heterosexual. That was the Friedlander twins. Uh, sitting there with the sign in her lap is a very famous person. You don't know who she is? You don't the recognize model. her? Yeah. Pat Cleveland. The model Pat Cleveland. Look at you. Look at you on the, look at you on the left there. Yeah. Um, that was right. Irene Stein shot that photograph. And believe it or not, I thought I was really fat. Um, in that Isn't picture. it funny how you'll you look at you pictures? You can never get rid of it. You can <laughs> never get rid of it. And the other picture was shot by Gilles Lang, um, a f French photographer, and we used that for Freaky Pussy. For the oh, that is, that's Freaky Pussy? That was a Freaky is that Pussy. Blanche? That's Blanche, yeah. Oh, okay, so now we've that got Blanche. A little rock and roll drag, kind of. A huh? little rock and roll drag. So here we go. That's the, that's, the, uh, that's the uptown cast. Once again, I could have sworn I was incredibly fat in that picture. And, I, and Matthew, who was... You look very thin, very thin in that photo. I know, photo. And Matthew was 19 years old. You know, he what showed up for... What was Matthew for, like? He was adorable. He was so fucking good. I was so in love with him. He showed up for his audition um, on roller skates. Um, with snot hanging out of his nose. He came in, opened his mouth, and I said, send everybody else home. I said, we got the kid. And they said, what are you talking about? Said, I didn't see him act at all. The producer said to me, I didn't see him act at all. In fact, they wanted to fire him. He'll, 
he'll tell you the story. They wanted to fire him wow. during rehearsals because they thought he wasn't acting. And I said, don't, this is called genius. Wow. You don't see him working. And this is from the movie, actually. This is, I like this 80s, 80s drag. That's 80s drag. That's, that's, that's like sexy 80s drag. Now, now, that I knew I was skinny for because I didn't eat for a year to make that movie. <laughs> I did not eat for a year. I mean, a, a meal would be like I'd have a cup of popcorn, and that was like what I'd eat an entire day. Wow. Yeah, it was not, it was not healthy. It was not, and I had my entire body waxed. Oh, for the movie. That, was, that was a waxing movie, moment. If you watch the movie, there's no hair on me at all other than there. Because there's a scene where I go running, where I go running um, uh, into bed with Brian Kerwin. Uh -huh. And you can see there's not a hair on me. <laughs> like a plucked chicken. This is a controversial role. Now, is it, now, see, here's the joke about this movie. This is Independence Day. Independence Day. And you are, what's his name? He's he's scared. Know. He's a generic generic gay guy. Can we call him no. that? No. Okay. okay. So here it is. Okay. First of all, first of all, we were making a comedy. No, none of yes. us making that movie had any idea it was going to become this huge movie. Right. Right. We were making a fucking comedy about a Jew and a black kid saving the world. I mean, <laughs> no one was taking this movie seriously. From then all of a sudden it became yeah from aliens. These, there's no flying in the movie. Everything right. was done on computers and all right. that. I mean, right. it's it's. I mean, I love the movie and I and love I, it. But he was heterosexual. The Look at those clothes. The character was heterosexual. Uh -huh. Oh, that was me playing a heterosexual. Okay. Well, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to go really watch it again laugh. tonight. So, so I remember you calling your mother because you were scared of the aliens. Right. So, which was which I did because when I put on those clothes, I said I look like. Oh God! Don't make me forget his name. Jason uh, Alexander. I said, I look like I'm doing Jason Alexander <laughs> in these clothes. And then I said, What am I, Jason Alexander, in that commercial where he calls his mother? And that's how that got put oh, in. Go. So, and what really cracked me up. So, so I did something that was so heterosexual. It was everywhere of Jason calling his mother, and it comes Everybody's... out Harvey is 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 doing a gay stereotype because he calls his mother. I was doing Jason that's Alexander. Hilarious. Thank you for you that up. You can't fucking win. You I'm can't win with fags. Like I said, you can't fucking win with fags. Me and, oh, me and now my he's brother. coming to Broadway. And now he's coming to Broadway, yeah. And we'll be on Broadway at the same time. So we've been sending notes back and forth. I have a question. Nice Do you think him. that Mrs. Doubtfire would make a good musical for Broadway? You know, we talked about it. Somebody, somebody bought the rights and made it into an opera, I think, in Germany. Oh, wow. And it didn't work. Um, Do you think you could make it work as a stage I, musical? I, you know what? Um, I think it's I think it's at the moment it's sort of untouchable because of the divorce and all that because Marcia was the producer of the oh, movie. You, you, and you can't touch so the property. I see. I, I would not. I would not feel comfortable because because I'm friendly with them both. I love. I love Marcia. I love Robin. I'm staying out of the divorce. Let's stay out of it. I'm okay. Stay, I've learned my lesson to stay out of divorces. Now, I love this photo that Bruce Clickus took. <laughs> and I'm wondering what do you what do you think Patty's saying right here? We don't live that far from each other, you know. Um, in in we Connecticut? Both, yeah. And, and we talk about a lot of shit. She's Patty. When did you first meet her? Do you remember? Uh, no. You know, you've known everybody forever. It feels like that. <laughs> you know, I said, to, I said to Elaine Stretch, when I first arrived on the scene, you were this, you were this grand dame, this older woman and all that. And somehow, 50 years later, we're contemporaries. How the fuck did that happen? <laughs> How did that happen? Well, that now, was this, now, now this is Real Housewives of Saint Tropez, right? Yeah, it is. It's the Real Housewives of Saint Tropez. It's Saint -Tropez. Um, it's not the it's not the dress it's not the dress, but it's the sort of dress that I'm going to do. I am what I am in. But this was a uh, uh, an understudies from from London, and um, and the photographer said, just go out on the street. We were doing the publicity shots. Just go out on the street, and I just went out because I said I look like a, an old madam. Well, I can't wait to see it, and well, I can't yes, wait for. You can. I can't wait for Kinky Boots. Kinky is Boots it going to be exciting? Be Cindy Lauper is going to blow your mind. She yeah. wrote such a brilliant score, and Newsies. Really and Newsies. Fun. That's really fun, but that's just fun to look at all those boys, <laughs> just all those boys singing and dancing. Well, we're very excited. You keep very well, busy, and every, every busy. all your projects are are something to look forward to. And now I'm going to dinner, and then I'm going to go watch Doug Hodge do La Casa of and see how it should be done. Oh, well, that's how it works. That's well, thank it you works. very much, Harvey. It's great All to right. see you. Bye, boy. We'll see you next time.